Uh, hello and welcome back to Jarvis Johnson Live, the channel that is live, but uh, it was live at a different time, not right now. Right now you're watching a recorded video, but it was live at, it was live at a, at a time. <laughs> and that time is now for us here on twitch.tv slash Jarvis Johnson. Say hi, YouTube, everyone. Look, it's a YouTube moment. Um, I want to give a quick shout out to Allison Uncouth here. He says, after years of YouTube fandom and then learning about the Twitch and subscribing a few weeks ago, I am finally here for a live stream. So excited. You could be like Allison, but you plan. If you don't want to be planned and you do want to join us for a live stream, come on over to twitch.tv slash Jarvis Johnson. Always be plugging. Always be plugging is not a part of the title. That's just the thing I say. But um, today we're here. to, And you don't have to do that. You don't have to. You don't have to come here live um, on Twitch. You know, you can just enjoy your coffee or your meal or your dishes that you're doing in the background right now and just listen to us watch Beyond Belief Fact or Fiction Season 2, Episode 3, which is um, a television show about lies. It's about, it's about dramatized lying where they hire actors to... Um, dramatized stories that are fake and then the show uh gaslights us and tells us that they're true without providing a shred of evidence to the contrary and it's hosted by Riker, aka jonathan frakes and it's great um thank you madman for the gifted and uh let's get the show on the road I'm, I've always, ex even though I watched the supercut of his, uh, of his optical illusions, I'm very excited to see which one is, is happening here. <laughs> why is he, why is he doing so much walking? We, I'm sorry. I know we just started the video, but like, it was like step, 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 step. Step, step, cut to <laughs> Jonathan Frakes, like, walking again. Just, I want to watch that for, like, half an hour. Just Jonathan Frakes walking the supercut. Fact or fiction? Are they really that different? Beyond being That was a very short fact intro. Fiction. The year this came out, it's like 1998 Frakes. or 99. side by side where substance is disguised as illusion and the only explanations are unexplainable can you separate the only ex hold on hold on i'm i'm i've never done a deep dive on what they actually say in the theme song and it's just completely it, bananas hold on hosted by jonathan frakes okay we live in a world we live in a world where the real and the unreal live side by side the real and the unreal live side by side. That's, I mean, they're just two, yeah, two sides of the same coin, but you could say that about, about anything. Um, the universe that we live in where there's like humans and earth and stuff live side by side with not that. Because there could be a world where that, none of that's true. And so they live side by side. Where substance is disguised as illusion. Substance is disguised as illusion. Disguised as illusion? So they're saying that, like, if you see a ghost, you think it's an illusion, but actually it's real and it's a substance. The show is, like, kind of wearing itself on its sleeve, I guess. It's, it's, okay. And the only explanation. The only explanations are unexplainable. That's the line that caused me to pause, because that one is breaking my brain. Can anybody explain the only explanations are unexplainable. I, I love to explain, but it's unexplainable. Yeah, I think that's correct. Okay, let's move on. Are unexplainable. Can you separate truth from fantasy? You haven't. <laughs> so I don't know how you're expecting us to. Um. Yeah, did Curtis really make a video about, about fact or fiction? We made that up. It's a fabrication. 
so, you must break through the web of your experience and open your mind to. Dude, there's so much fake news about Curtis making a video about this in in the uh, in the chat. That's a total fabrication. It's a lie distinguished disguised as an illusion. We actually live uh, where the the truth. The reality that Curtis didn't make a video about this and that he did live side by side. That video is an illusion. It's a total fabrication by one of our writers. Things beyond belief. But the only explanation is unexplainable. So just wanted to clarify that. What oh, I love this one. Always what you get. Take this line drawing of a man in profile. Is this an honest man? The answer is written across his face. During this program, you will be asked to distinguish truth from lies and stories that are designed to deceive you. We'll tell you which ones are inspired by actual events at the end of the show. From this point on, be careful what you choose to believe. I feel bad for like. I feel like this could be a guy's face, you know, um, and he might not be a liar. It's not his fault. His side profile spells liar because like s the spelling of something on your face has nothing to do with whether or not you are that thing. You know, that's not his fault. That's not his fault. So what if he's got liar written on his face? Because the man who seems to be telling the truth may actually turn out to be a liar. He really had to hit us with that that rotation again, just so that you could see them spell out liar. Innocent until proven guilty. Our entire system of criminal justice is based upon that premise. Yet in their zeal to see the guilty convicted. Wait, why is he? Why is he here now? Sorry, I, I like zoned out for a second and just like. Innocent until proven guilty. Innocent until proven guilty. Our entire system of criminal justice is based upon that premise. You, you'd like to think. Yet in their zeal to see the guilty convicted, some are too willing to deny others that presumption. Based? Question mark? Is that... Is, is that... Is that... <laughs> is that based? Hang on. Craig Hoffman was... Or is he bootlicking? I can't, I can't tell what he's saying. Is he saying the good thing or the opposite of the good thing? What is he saying? That premise. Yet in their zeal to see the guilty... Yet in their zeal to see the guilty convicted... They convicted. Some are too willing to... Some are too willing to deny others that presumption. Right. So he's saying that... He's saying that, like, it's supposed to be innocent until proven guilty, but people who are really zealously want to want to see someone convicted they deny people the benefit of innocent until proven guilty right he's not saying anything first of all he's barely saying anything i don't know what he's trying to say he's saying that others are quick to judge yeah that that's what i so i think he's saying the based thing it's it's almost like uh it's almost like a um what is it called like a Rorschach test yeah because I I feel like he's cr he's criticizing the justice system um because he's saying it's a farce because you know because you know j juries are or 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 yeah we're jumping to conclusions or something I don't know though deny others that presumption. Craig Hoffman was that kind of cop. Oh, so he's so he's saying Craig Hoffman was the kind of cop that denies someone the innocent until proven guilty. So if it's about a cop that wants somebody to be guilty that's not, then it's based. So is Craig Hoffman going to be the one who learns the learn the lesson? Learns the lesson? It's it's actually Schrodinger's based comment. It's it's Schrodinger's commentary on the prison industrial complex. Is it a based take? It's the Jonathan Frakesian, uh, uh, literally, is he saying something or the opposite? <laughs> Yet in their zeal to see the guilty convicted, some are too willing to deny others that presumption. Craig Hoffman was that kind of cop. His philosophy was... <laughs> 
<laughs> Someone said Craig Hoffman is gonna arrest a ghost. If you're brought in, you must have done something wrong. Hoffman was determined to get a confession for every crime that passed his desk, no matter how many crimes he had to commit in the process. Boom. Dude, this is based. It was 5 p.m. Is it based or cringe? The based or cringe takes of Jonathan Frakes. On Tuesday when Sims was brought in again. It seemed like old times, except this time the ending would be much different. Look who's back. Officer Sands, watch and learn. Oh, this episode has blood and gave me nightmares as a kid. All right, we'll be on the lookout because um, I don't want to show blood for... Uh... Do you know when it comes up, Boyo? If anybody has timestamps on when blood shows up, because I want to skip that because it's against Twitch TOS, even though it's um, fake blood, probably it's still against it. I've seen right-wingers say based on homophobic content. Ugh, yeah, I think it's one of those things that's like everyone's saying it now. We need a new word. I feel like everything like based is old, right? And I it, you hate to see it get lost in the it lost in the sauce, lost in the shuffle. Actually, most of the things we say are like extremely old, and and things I heard uh, black adults say when I was a kid. Um. Help me out here, Sims. I want to talk about the armed robbery. On the 45th last night. Now, you don't know anything about that, right? Well, you didn't have anything to do with it, did you? Like, Lil B, the base god? I mean, come on. Does base mean bias? No, it just means, like, uh, I th in this context, it's like a synonym for, for, like, woke, I guess. But woke is super fucking... All of these terms have been like very overloaded and kind of re like co-opted at this point. So nothing means anything. But I was just saying, does Jonathan Frakes have a good take or a bad take? That's basically what I was, I was saying. Um, yeah, base is originally a red pill incel thing. It absolutely is not. Based is like a, a very old ba base is renowned for decades. But maybe it's being, like, co-opted. Maybe it's currently being co-opted. Uh, and I, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. But I feel like I see both I see both sides using the term. So nothing means anything. About that, right? Well, you didn't have anything to do with it. Base, wait. Based was right-wing. Now it's been co-opted by the left. I, 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 so, like... Do y'all know about Lil B? Like, it's the same it's the same base as in, in Lil B, the base god, who's been the base god for a very long time. Like, uh based is based is a very old term. Did you? I mean I mean and Lil B didn't invent the word base either. I'm just using that as a anchor point to say that it's like a much older um much older thing. Just because we picked you up a block from the scene mere minutes after it went down doesn't mean that uh, you had anything to do with it, right? Sorry, now I'm like not paying attention to the story. I'm going to go back to paying attention to the story. One, one time Lil B emailed me for tech support. I don't know why. I think he thought I worked at YouTube. Um, and he legit emailed me and was like, can you help me with something? And I was like, I, yeah, sure. I will, I will help you, Lil B. I don't know why you're <laughs> asking me, of all people. <laughs> it's, yeah, I helped him. It was so funny. I, like, sent it to all my friends. I was like, literally, what is going on right now? Right. Well, you didn't have anything to do with it, did you? I mean, just because we picked you up a block from the scene mere minutes after it went down doesn't mean that uh, you had anything to do with it. Right? And just because a witness picked you out of a lineup, well, that doesn't mean that you're guilty of any crime, does it? Where's my lawyer? Oh, come on, Sims. We don't need a lawyer here. We're just talking. No. I mean, it's not like we think you were even involved, right, Sims? 
I mean, just I watch too much true crime. You need a lawyer. You need a lawyer. Just because your rap sheet is a... Oh, thank you. 454. Oh, I need to refresh this so that I have the timestamps. Out of a lineup. All right. Well, that doesn't mean that you're guilty of any crime, does it? Where's my lawyer? Oh, come on. Since no, you need a lawyer. You need a lawyer here. You need We're a lawyer. Talking. And if you can't afford a lawyer, one will be provided for you. I mean, it's not like we think you were even involved, right, Sans? The people are also saying there's police abuse. Ugh. I mean, I think that's the whole premise of this one. But, uh... I mean, it's dramatized. I do understand the trigger. Like, it could be triggering for people. But let me know the timestamps on that as well. I mean, just because... If, if anybody's got them. Long, just because you've been through the system so many times, they're about to name the revolving door after you. I mean, that doesn't even mean you were there. Go to hell. Officer Sands, readjust the restraints on the suspect, please. It's apparent that we need to have a more... I like I don't personally want to skip this one because I think that like there's so many real uh abuses of power by real cops that that like are constantly like blown up on our feed. Like if I have to look at like black people being abused on my fucking Twitter timeline, I can watch a 30-year-old dramatization of a of a, a a white cop uh being like abusive to a random like criminal. Though though like I'll, I'll also if it gets really bad then I will like, I'll, I'll, I'll judge, I'll, 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 I'll call an audible. Confidential. But I, I think that like, this is what airing on the sci-fi channel. I'm, I'm like gonna, I'm gonna, I don't know. I'll monitor this, right? I am going to skip the blood. I don't, no one needs to see that. I don't like to see that. Conversation. Yeah. If they say it's fiction, that's, that's the real. Oh, Boyo says it's one of the best in the series and he's, He's a he's a scholar of of moment of truth. Tell him what he wants to hear, even if you have to take it back later. Up yours. Don't mess with this guy. This isn't some good cop bad cop routine. This guy's a very bad cop. Officer Sands, hook him up and step out. Hey, Craig, uh, why don't you let me talk to him and see? It's a super villain cop. It's like a yeah evil. It's an evil cop. I can... it, okay, you know. In before someone says all cops are evil, um, you know what I mean. <laughs> Get out. Okay, apparently the uh, the scene is coming up, so I may skip past parts Sims. of it. Confession. Okay, so he's gonna like try to force a confession out of him through abuse. Is good for the soul. Just think of me as your priest. I'm not. I have JCS brain rot. No, I've watched so many JCS videos that I'm like Catholic, and I didn't have anything to do with any holdup. Last chance. What are you gonna do? Kiss me? Sure. Get ready to pucker up. All right, I'm just gonna. I'm going to get ready to pucker up real quick. Let me just, just going to do this. But first. All right. It's a play by play. He's, he's, oh, okay. They cut away, but he definitely like strikes him. Then we're hearing beating noises. I'm going to do a little muting, doing a little muting. And then the, the cop that was afraid of his, uh, cop boss is like looking from the outside of the, uh, interrogation room. And then bad things are happening, but you're not seeing anything. He needs a doctor. Uh, let me confess this. We'll get him on. Hey, McCarthy! McCarthy, get in here! Why do I have ads on my browser? It's tab for a cause. It's like the ads raise money for charity. You're gonna help Sans take this piece of trash down out of the lockup. Hey, Sims, tell me when you're ready to talk. I didn't do it. This time it really wasn't me. 
I don't like violence either, for the record. And I don't need to, like... I, I was just defending that I wanted to watch the story, but I also don't need to... Like, I'm... You know, I'm... Any There wasn't extended violence shown, for the record. It was all just, like, the sounds of it, but that's still, like, why I muted it. The cop's business was done. Now it was okay. up to maintenance to clean the wall. All right, okay. We don't... We get it. Talk to me. Think of me yeah, as implied violence. Your priest. You know, confession is good for the soul. McCarthy! Yeah. Man, that, that was supposed to be gone. How do you tell the cleaning crew I'm gonna stop checking for green cards? They don't stop slacking off. They tried to clean it, but that stain won't come out. Then get it painted. Yes, sir. Now, where were we? Oh, what did he say? What did he say? Oh. Then get it painted. Yes, sir. I didn't even catch what he said uh, that was racist. Where were we? Oh, he said something about green cards. I literally, I'm not going to replay it, but I didn't even, I didn't even see that. Oh yeah, that's fucked up. Oh, I should have called this. I knew this was going to happen. Officer? He keeps bleeding through. Well, put some plaster on it. What, I got to do your job as well as my own? Huh? Just get it done. Now, let me get this straight. The burnt spoons and the scales that we found in your apartment, they're not yours, right? Hoffman, sorry to break up your little party here, but we gotta take his pictures again. The film was bad. Uh, take him. Did you hear about Sims? What? The guy we had in here the other day, armed robbery. Oh, the guy with the uh, nosebleed, huh? Yeah. Well, it seems some crackhead in general lockup didn't like the way he looked at. Bashed his head in. Jesus. He's dead. Jesus. Well, let's hear it for the crackhead. What? He this is the story is so fucked up. Could not. He stopped the revolving door. Is this a horror thing? I mean, it's like supernaturally. I wouldn't call it horror. But there are like, there's like, uh, supernatural elements that are like, it's like fantasy. There's a little, it's a little goosebumpsy, but it's like horror adjacent maybe. But I don't think there's been anything. Um, has there been anything supernatural at all? I mean, in this up in this one, just the ghost handprint. But um, damn, somebody said the real horror is the American justice system. I mean, true. What happened next was reconstructed by investigators. Somehow, Hoffman found himself locked inside the room. Oh. Then he must have been extremely frightened by something he saw. Because Craig Hoffman, an extremely fit police officer, experienced a- Why, why have to say he's extremely fit? Also the um uh also the most of the stories are pretty goofy. Traumatic shock to his nervous system that night. <gasps> what? Oh, he's being ghost choked. Oh yikes. They found Hoffman's body in the morning. The official report said heart failure. He was, nobody could explain he was it. choked by the force slash the ghost of uh, that Sims guy who was wrongly, who was wrongly um, convicted. Marks around his throat as if he had been strangled by hand. Weeks later, another man confessed to the armed robbery, clearing the name of Sims. The bloody handprint never appeared again. What's the true explanation here? 
Was the handprint on the wall really a message from an innocent man? Or was it an illusion caused by some defect in workmanship found in the wall itself? If so, why did it reappear after the wall was plastered over? Yeah, that's like, you know, beyond belief, some might say. What about the strange death of Craig Hoffman? If it was a heart attack, why did his neck show signs of strangulation? Because he was choked out by a ghost. What, what do you, what do you, do I have to do this all for you, Jonathan Briggs? Did he accidentally strangle himself as he was trying to gasp for air? Or was it some retribution from- Can that even happen? Don't you like, can't you like not, wouldn't you like pass out? Beyond. Is this story true, or are the handprints of a writer all over it? I mean... Find out if this story is true or false at the end of our show. Next. We like to watch it out of order and figure out on a story-to-story -story basis whether or not... Um, here, we'll do a prediction. Uh, ghost choke. Fact. Fiction. Asleep in his bunk and outside. Darren he was there. And that too. Other tale. Next, you'll find return. See how well you did judging whether our stories tonight were fact or fiction. The plot about the detective who couldn't remove the stain from his wall or his conscience. Real or unreal? Okay, we don't need to see the recap. Sound. Wow, it's a fact. Let me see if I can get out. If you guessed this one was based on an actual event, you're right. It happened. Dude, Jonathan Frake said, said no thank you to the prison industrial complex. Um, let me mark that one. Uh, yeah, everybody guessed it. I mean, 83%. That's fact. That's facts. That's facts on facts. Through. He did. A bloody handprint. What's the true explanation? It's a toe. <laughs> <laughs> if you guessed this one was based, that's true. <laughs> Why did it reappear after the wall was plastered over? Why did it gasp for air? Who? Or are the handprints of a right? I love that he's like, will I ex will I explain the the ghost handprint? No, I won't. But it's true. But I won't explain it. All over it. Next screen. Is there a more annoying sound than the screech of chalk against chalkboard? Oh, don't do it. Oh, the screech of chalk. Oh, okay, it's just chalk. Oh, ouch. Jonathan Frakes. We all remember teachers who, despite years of classroom experience, couldn't stop from making that sound, and students who would make the sound just to I'm sorry. annoy the rest of the class. But there is something highly unusual about the chalkboard. It, I, like, I was like, oh, it's not going to be nails on a chalkboard. So, like, I didn't think, like, chalk on the chalkboard was even that bad. I mean, it was annoying, but we got through it together. In our story tonight, the sounds it emits are far more intense than the usual annoying squeaks. In fact, they are sounds that seem to come from the depths of hell itself. I, they better not put like annoying sounds in this one. Like, come on. The chalkboard. I okay <laughs> okay. They're really trying to get us to skip every story. Is it gonna be ghost shock? Demon shock? Cut it out! <laughs> <laughs> Cut it out! You're 26. What are you doing in our class? Imagine, imagine you get a spitball and it's like this dude who feels like he should be a senior in college. Cut it out. <laughs> What'd you do, Mama Kisser, huh? Sorry? What was that dude doing? The dude in the do-rag? What is he like? He's like spinning like a... A knife or like a... You do, it looks like a Mama butter Kisser, knife. Huh? You hit also, sorry, I did the pausing thing. Somebody left me like... A really angry comment about me pausing and unpausing a lot. And I'm I'm sorry. I'm sorry I do that, but at the same time, I'm not sorry and it's going to continue. Note and choir. 
I was an honor student. I couldn't believe I actually had to stay after school in detention. It was a strange place to be, but not nearly as strange as the events that would take place later. So what is it, Mama's boy? I faked a note to skip gym, okay? My, you're a real desperado. <laughs> Maybe everyone doesn't aspire to your level of criminal mind. Oh, really? Well, I do. What about you, girl? What is going on? Why are you hanging with us, nasty? Boys? Oh yeah, dude. The comments on the uh, the comments on the the live channel are so bizarre to me. And maybe it's just like I I'm reading them more because the channel is very small. But today somebody said they lost respect for me because I had a plastic uh, Starbucks cup, and I'm like, this cup is made out of paper. <laughs> I don't know what you want from me. I'm good in math. I let a friend copy answers on my test. Uh, yeah, okay. Well, uh, yeah, that's cool, Claire. Wait, sorry, I missed something. I missed something. Maybe? I let a friend copy answers on my test. Uh, yeah, okay. Well, uh, yeah, that's cool, Claire. Dude, these people are so old. Mr. Mumbles. Man, oh my. <laughs> yo, yo. Hey, Mr. Mumbles. Hey, hey, you. Don't you know he's a deaf mute? Hey, Mr. Mumbles. Wait, trigger warning for this. Jesus Christ. They're calling this man a Mr. Mumbles? That's not funny. That's so fucked up. Funny. What? I didn't do anything. Come on, Molly, man. Dude, the ableism just jumped out. Man, that's how we got in here in the first place, man. Sit down, leave that man alone. Everyone's so old. It's unreal. Hey, hey, what do you say that? He said you're harmless. But I say you give failure a bad name. Ha. Oh, the, he was a knife. Time never seemed to pass as slowly as it did that afternoon. I was bored out of my mind. But looking back on it, maybe boredom wasn't such a bad thing. He just wants an evil Jesse Eisenberg. I can see it. This school sucks. You're gonna get us all in a lot of trouble. Oh man, what a rebel! Trouble when Mrs. Sawyer. A regular Bart Simpson over here. Comes back. Okay. Oh my god. <laughs> Wait. He just like scraped the chalk, and then it, the chalk, the chalk was like, ouchie. What was that? Ooh! <laughs> Don't write on me! Hey, man! Hey, man! <laughs> you know, you know they asked him to be extra urban on set. They were like, and here's your do-rag, and I want you to... Can you just turn up the black a little bit? Coming from out there, man. Then where's all that screaming coming from? I don't know. Draw another line. What are you, a nut? Just do <laughs> it. This is too funny. <laughs> Arr, ow! <laughs> Ouchie! Just do it. Uh, oh, man, that's coming from the blackboard. Oh, <laughs> it sounds sensual. Oh! <laughs> this is impossible. What the hell's going on? If someone's in trouble and they're calling for help. How do we know where this person is at? Give me the chalk. Why are they all trying to get to the bottom of it? Why, why not just leave? <laughs> oh, God. This <laughs> is. It's like. Okay. <laughs> cool it, Blackboard. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I would leave after the first moan. We follow the screams. <laughs> Don't. They're not screams. You guys are going to be very disappointed when you get to the bottom of this. Maybe one of us should stay behind and wait for Mrs. Sawyer to come back. Yeah. Good. You stay here. Just keep... <laughs> I'm just imagining Jonathan Franks coming back in. So, he walks away. He walks in from like 25 feet. So, was the story of the horny chalkboard real? Or was it just something that we made up? 
It's actually fact. This happened in Nevada in the 80s. <laughs> I'm drawing on the board. Come on, you guys, what are you waiting for? <laughs> <laughs> so we oh yeah this we made it up this is actually one of our writers and it's a very strange kink of theirs i mean hey look no kink shaming no kink shaming to the chalkboard i guess started following the trail of screams hoping it would lead us to the source we didn't know why this was happening we just knew it was um you know you know we're an inclusive chat when I say no kink shaming in reference to the chalkboard that moans when you write on it. <laughs> um, Gamesy610, thank you for the 10 gifted. <laughs> we didn't know why this was happening. We just knew it was. Okay, that's it. I promise I'll never cut Jim again. <laughs> Someone said I am absolutely kink shaving the fucking chalk. Dude, that's hey. If you're kink shaving the chalk, you're not welcome in this community. This way. Right. <laughs> Someone said this is sex ed. <laughs> What's happening in the chalk zone? <laughs> Does anybody remember chalk zone? Why do they keep playing it? Literally? Just too weird. Maybe, you know, I like Kira pointed out that these are minors because they're in they're in like grade school or whatever. And maybe that's why they chose very, very old actors to play these children, so that it didn't seem as weird as it actually is. What do you guys think? I don't know, man. It's hard to tell. No, it's coming from that way. You're right. Uh, you go first, though. Maybe, you know what would be fun? Maybe we make a gold video out of, like, the best um, fact or fiction stories. Um, like, I feel like this one is so absurd that it would be good. Step aside. I've got a knife for some reason. <laughs> Come on, hurry! <laughs> did, did is useless. Step aside. Like, you're not doing anything. Right, I got it. Oh, bullshit. <laughs> oh, bullshit, dude. That is not how locks work. Come on, hurry. Right, <laughs> dude, master, master lockpick. Master lockpick. Master locksmith. Where's it coming from? Okay, so nothing. Oh no. Oh no. I don't even want to say the name that they call this man. The janitor. Come on, help me over here. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Hurry up, slide him out, slide him out. Guys, help! Guys, guys, move. Move our guys. Was the moaning just to happen to correspond with the chalk? Was it him who was like injured and that's why he was moaning? Is he okay? Yeah, he's gonna be alright. Get him out the smoke. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> so, what is the school? Careful, careful. Sorry, no, it's okay. Watch out for this hole. Easy. Okay. Go there. Get the door. Settle down. Easy, easy. Come on, man. Easy. 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 Okay, this is an inappropriate joke that I thought of. I, I'll say it, I'll say it. 
get it it's gonna be bad it's not gonna be funny it's not gonna be funny it's like a it's like a it's a pun but i was i was thinking that the the chalkboard was laying pipe huh huh get it because sex and also the the the, the pipe fell so it's yep all right let's move on what's he saying He'd like to thank you both. Man, it's all right. It's all right. Hey, as long as you are. Right. He, he wait. Correct me if I'm wrong, but is he doing like ASL, or is is this woman just like able to read his mind? Oh, What'd oh, he say? said thank you. He said thank you. Man, he'd like to thank you both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that was. Man, it's all right. It's all right. Hey, as long as you are. Right. I know. I I saw. I actually saw the thank you in ASL. Sorry. Okay. Could the story be true? The stories are so weird. Like, I don't feel like we're getting any sort of closure or anything, and I don't fully know if I understood what was happening there. Could the sounds of a man in Yeah, what was the story? The stress really be communicated through the chalkboard? Or did the students just imagine the board was transmitting those sounds? Were the sounds actually coming from the vents around the building? But then, the janitor's vocal cords were in no shape to make any sounds in the first place. To figure out whether this story is fact or fiction isn't an easy exercise. But that's your assignment. Good lord. That's your assignment. He's giving us homework. How could Anthony Blair being in work? There are sane. You're just the terrible sound that seemed. To... How about the tale of the terrifying sound that seemed to come from a common classroom chalkboard? True or false? Oh yeah, let me do a prediction. Um. Horny chalkboard. Fact. Fiction. Oh, I can't say horny. Um, moaning chalkboard. Horny. Horny. <laughs> That's, uh, I mean... That's the real problem is putting the word horny in predictions, not like hate raids that are happening on Twitch, right? The... Um... No, no, they're, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just joshing, but also criticizing the platform. Why is everybody hating on Jonathan Frakes? I don't know. I didn't see that. Okay. All right. Let's see. Okay. Hey, that's it. I promise I'll never cut Jim again. Thanks, Boyo, for the tier one. This way. The story of a school haunted by the sounds of screams was inspired by actual events. It's fact. Y'all are killing it today. 86% of people knew that was fact. But see, the thing is, when Jonathan Frakes says it's fact, he, like, describes a story that's... <laughs> no, it wasn't! Uh, like, he describes it as a story that's, like, not the story that we watched. He's like, a school that was haunted by the scream... Haunted by screams... Well, you didn't mention the janitor or the chalkboard in that. You know what I mean? Was in the story of a school haunted by the sounds of screams. This was not a school haunted by the sounds of screams. It was a horny chalkboard and a janitor. Was inspired by actual events. Okay. Yeah. Oh. 
sounds of a man in the really admitted you're out with your assignment find out if this is an unexpected turn on beyond belief fact or fiction inspired does the heavy lifting yeah and also the fact that they can just say whatever they want and not explain it whatsoever I wonder if anybody has tried to compile a list of fact or fiction stories and like what their actual basis is. How many reports have you watched and read about the dangers of stress? Oh, this is about to get too real. Stressful, aren't they? Fighting stress has become a major industry. Squeeze this, rub this, listen to this. All designed to help. Excuse me? <laughs> rub this? Oh, like a stress ball? <laughs> Sorry, I'm still I'm still on the horny chalkboard. <laughs> I was like, Jonathan Franks, take me to dinner first. Being stress has become a major industry. Squeeze this, rub this, listen to this. All designed to help you unwind and reduce a condition that has been blamed for everything from high blood pressure to hiccups. I want the confidence this show has. Oh, for sure. I'm eating the crumbs of plantain chips from yesterday. Diane Lerner was feeling the major symptoms of stress in her life. She was determined to shake off its effects and find a place where she could relax and enjoy the world again. But is there such a place? Diane is about to find out. Hey, Ross, it's me. Hey, get away. Diane Lerner was- Wait, so they're gonna turn a story about somebody wanted to de-stress by like taking a vacation into a supernatural event? Can we just relax for a second, Jonathan Frakes? She's taking her first time off since she started at her company. And on the way up, she spent most of the time on the phone to the office. It's outstanding. Driving. Um, on my desk, I've got this... It'll wait till you get back, Diane. No, no, it won't. I want you to... You're on your first vacation in two Thank years. you, Bryce. That's Chill cool. Out, Listen. I worked up some new numbers for dramas. Now, when you check out the spreadsheet, I want you to look at line number 30. Diane, we're not going to fall apart here. At least not totally. I promise I'm not going to give that account to anyone else. Don't worry. Throw the phone away. Goodbye. Ross, Ross, don't hang up. I'm serious. Look, just do those few things for me, and I really I appreciate it, okay? Bye, I'll Diane. get back to you later. You too. Have a good weekend. Goodbye. <laughs> <sighs> Oh, no, oh, oh, no. Safe driving was not Diane Lerner's strong point, but somehow she sounds like sounds like she needed <clears throat> sounds like she needs. Um, what am I trying to say? Hmm. Hmm. Think about the joke that you've already stopped the video to make. No pressure. More like Diane Lerner's license, am I right? She appeared at her dream getaway right on time. <laughs> Canada's worst driver. <laughs> the woodland cabin was just as she pictured it. Dude, that looks nice. The key was left just where the landlady promised. And the view was just the remedy Diane needed for the tension that she'd been feeling lately. The inside of the cabin had the smell of hickory and pine wood, and the furnishings were perfect. If Diane was looking for peace and quiet. This is funny. Jarvis has strong, cool, older sister's boyfriend. That's my vibe. I'm your older sister's boyfriend. I'm not your brother. I'm not your dad. I'm your older sister's cool boyfriend. This forest setting was the place. In fact, it was so quiet. I'm very cool. It was almost spooky. Oh my god. Why they... Why they gotta do the jump scares, though? Like, it's not horror, but then they do... <coughs> they do jump scares for, like random people and children and stuff like i'm never gonna get scared by little stevie but why'd you have to do a jump scare oh. Oh, God. i i didn't expect someone to be here i'm mrs james 
Oh, right, of course. I, I spoke to you on the phone earlier. Yes. Oh. So this is pre-Airbnb, y'all. This is a vacation rental by owner, but before VRBO as well, probably. I'm sorry. Well, I'm so sorry. I see I've frightened you. Oh, no, no. I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm... Jarvis, would you be a worm if you could? Chat, would you still love me if I was a worm? I'll wait. Would you still love me if I was a worm? Okay, there's enough yeses in here. I'm not going to run a poll. I don't want to see the truth. I've been unnerved. I, I, what? I almost got into a car accident on my way here. I had dropped something and there, there was this huge boulder that was jutting out right into the road and I turned and... That's not what happened. Was that what happened, Diane? When someone says I almost got into an accident, you usually assume it involves like another person. But she was just like not paying attention. And then, you know, <laughs> she just hit, almost hit like a, a, like a formation that was like a natural form. It wasn't like a boulder that was just like sitting there. Well, it didn't jut out. It didn't do anything. It was stationary. <sighs> I almost didn't make it here for my vacation. I'm glad you made it in one piece. I was just tidying up. This place has been closed up for some time. Oh, it's great. I mean, look at this. It's, it's even more beautiful than you described. Oh, I'm so glad you like it. I think you're going to be very comfortable and cozy here. Oh, I know. Someone said she's dead, calling it now. Yeah, this uh, landlord lady could very well be a ghost. I am. <laughs> I just, I've got a lot of work to do, and I just needed some place that I could really concentrate. On your vacation. Oh, okay. Well, the bedrooms and the bath are upstairs. There's the kitchen. And uh, you probably passed Osgood's store on the way a few miles back? Oh, yeah. Mm. Now, they make their own ice cream. You've got to get the pistachio <laughs> while you're there. <laughs> so I, I think I'll leave you alone so you can work. Great. Okay. Uh, uh, well, vaca I, I don't want to work. I want to do the vacation. Where's the closest neighbor? Oh, that would be me. If you cut straight through the woods, I'm about a mile due east. So look, I've left my number by the phone. If, if you cut straight through the woods, but what if I go on the road? I'd rather not go straight through the woods for a mile. If you need anything, call. Otherwise, I'll just check with you in a few days. Mm, you know, I'll leave the local paper on your porch. And I think that just about covers it. Well, thank you. So enjoy. Okay, <laughs> bye. Goodbye. <laughs> this feels like if the Twilight Zone left out the political commentary and was just weird stuff. I think that's even giving it too much credit. Empy, yeah. thank you for the uh, continued sub. It was early the next morning when Diane started hearing the voices. It turns out that they were just coming from a chalkboard at the local high school. <laughs> She ignored the sounds at first, thinking it must have been the wind through the trees. Oh my god, what a chonky laptop. Oh my god. Look at the ports on the back of that thing. Wowee. You know what's so funny? I remember, like, my aunt had a old, very, very old laptop when I was um, very young. And it was huge. And she just kept it in the closet. Like it was like a one-time use appliance or something. Like like you keep a vacuum in the closet. You know what I mean? Like uh, <laughs> it was so odd. It was like, oh, do you want to do something on the laptop? I mean, it has solitaire, and that's pretty much about all it does, you know? The tree. And I'm like, no, it's a computer. <laughs> it's a aunt. Aunt. But then they came back again. It was like, I feel like you would, you would, instead of, um, you know, carrying a, a bag and a, and a laptop, carrying a laptop in a bag, it was like, um, you would carry it in a, like a briefcase. <laughs> it was an emergency laptop. Yeah, it was. 
I feel bad. This woman just wants to relax. She's too stressed. Oh, or is she so stressed that she's like hearing things? Because that can happen. Excuse me. Hello. Excuse me. Uh, okay. All right. You know, are you listening to me at all? Hello. Suddenly they were gone. And it was quiet again. Oh, and by the way, Mrs. James, you know the children that live in this area? There aren't any children living in this area. Not for miles. In fact, the people who live close by have children who've grown up and moved out of the house. Really? Well, there was a bunch of kids playing around in the yard and you know, making a lot of noise. Really? You sure? Mm-hmm. Are you really okay, my dear? Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, I'm fine. I just, I just have to finish up this work, that's all. Anyway, I don't think they're going to come back. Thanks for calling, Mrs. James. I just want one story where there's not like a, like everything feels like it's a ghost story, even in the chalkboard situation. Bye. Yeah, this could just be, I mean, I have no reason to believe this is fiction because like, you could just be hallucinating. Ah, it's a, it's a kid. <laughs> Why do you persist? That th that's like the most unnatural word she could have said there. Why do you persist? <laughs> and yet they persisted. Dude, this girl looks fully green screened into this scene. Oh, wait, is she green screened into the scene? I mean, it could just be the, I don't know. It just looks unnatural. Oh, okay, no, she's really there. She's really there. No. It's time. The peace and quiet of the fall. They're the they're the stress reliever children. They come out to tell you to relax, uh, and come with them and just play play tag so that you can de stress and forget about the the weight of uh, of your everyday life. Forest was forever disturbed now. The next day, she would feel differently about it. I'd be like, damn, do you kids ever rest? Are you ready now? <laughs> For what? You know. Dude, they behave in, in a very strange way, you know? No, no, I don't. It's time. Like, why are these kids just always... We've been waiting for you. It's like, uh... It's like some Evangelion shit. It's like she's dead and this is people like welcoming her to the afterlife. Time for what? What, this? Oh, 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 everybody. Okay, I'm closing my eyes. I can't see chat. I know exactly what's about to happen here. She's going to look at the newspaper and find out that she died when she was getting that water bottle um, and had that car accident. And this is actually just her passing on to the afterlife. Uh, how would anyone have submitted this story to fact or fiction is beyond me. Who would – how would – she's the dead one. So, like, how would anybody – how would fact or fiction find out about the story? Anyway, um, that's what I think it's going to be. It's going to be about – how a local woman hit a boulder that was just jutting out of the street and died. And um, and this is just like her stress. Yeah, yeah, I think that's what it is. I think that's what it is. She goes off into the distance with them and then they cut back to the newspaper and they do a slow zoom on the newspaper where you see where you see the story, where you see the story. That's what's going to happen. Come with us. Okay. I'm coming. Oh, or the lady discovers the newspaper. Okay, so this lady's the one who submitted the who submitted the story to back attention. 
Diane actually never existed. Hi, Diane! Yeah, she's gonna... Hey! <laughs> Alright, here's the newspaper. And... A bada boom, bada bing. Seattle woman dies in car accident. A bada boom. A bada boom, a gabagool. <laughs> and that's a prediction. And that's a prediction for you. And that is why we come to the Fact or Fiction stream. Diane! And that's my bigger brain. <laughs> it's -a me, a Mario. Let's look at the paper again. Another accident the same day involved. Must be a fact. He's got the paper himself. Involving six school children. Was the woman that Mrs. J Wait, hang on. The accident involves six school children? Yeah. Another accident the same day involving six school children. Oh, 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 another accident the same day. So the kids that were there, they were all just in purgatory and they were like, oh, hey, lady, we all have to go to the afterlife. So come along with us. Was the woman that Mrs. James encountered that day only the spirit of Diane Lerner? We knew the kids were dead, but I guess that explains like why the, um, why they were there it's like the school bus thing did she truly become one of the why was her death the headline and not the bus accident great question great question random one <laughs> horrible driver <laughs> diane lerner uh obviously crashes because she's not paying attention to the road <laughs> and meanwhile six children are dead spirits of the woods did she join the ghosts of the children who died in the bus tragedy or was our witness, Mrs. James, a bit overexcitable? Maybe she imagined that Diane disappeared. Could it be that Diane was disappointed with her paradise and slipped out without telling Mrs. James? This doesn't, I, just being honest, as a stressed person, this didn't do anything to alleviate my stress. If anything, now I'm wondering if I uh, died. <laughs> I'm wondering if, I'm, if I've died and now Twitch chat is just, is just waving at me. And telling me to pass on and into the afterlife. Because I've got work to finish. I'm working right now. I might be in a cabin in the woods. This is why I'm happy that we don't have the, uh, the, the Jarvis like, hey, um, emote yet. Because that's what people would be spamming. But what then are we to make of the newspaper article? Oh, God. Everyone's saying, join us. Come with us, Jarvis. Oh, no. Is the truth. <laughs> school bus oh god someone said i would be laughing at the deaths of children uh, again and i think that is technically happening and i i just want to explain for people watching on youtube it's not what it looks like this is a fictional story i hope um but i was about to make the joke that like well not i'm not even gonna make it i'm not even gonna make it easy to spot here or is it difficult to tell the forest from the trees find out if this story is true or false Find out if the story is true or false. It's like so funny to hear a completely fake story and then hear them say, find out if it's true or false. <laughs> Chat crash kills 1000. <laughs> that is, that is actually like, I wanted to think of that joke and I couldn't figure it out. And then that's the funny way to write it. So congrats to you. Our next story was about the woman who left her high stress job for a heaven on earth. See, like, why did the stressed woman have to die? I just want to, I just want to relax. Is there no justice for somebody who's too stressed and just wants to relax? Is the only answer to die and go to heaven with a bunch of school children? Like, what's that about? Is that the only piece? Um... Also, stress didn't kill her. The water bottle did. Great, great point. Yeah, it's like, no, stress can literally kill you. And, uh, and also, yeah, what a, what a poor way to communicate the lesson. Cause like stress can literally kill you. And this woman is just a bad driver and that's how she died. Like she's. Her stress had absolutely nothing to do with the fact that she just was not a good driver. Maybe if she wasn't stressed, she would have spent more time practicing her driving.
All right, what did what did this say? Oh, we've got 98% fiction this time. People are metagaming because because so much of it was fact before. So you're like, they've got to It's got to be fiction this time. I ended too fast. I always do 30 second predictions. Because we got to get the show on the road. Wow, is this? Oh, wait, no, I, I was literally, I jumped to the end of the episode to look at the fact, to look at the answer to the fact of fiction. And then I went, wow, are we at the end of the episode already? <laughs> so, dude, my brain sometimes. Uh, excuse me, kids. Excuse me. Hello. Excuse me, kids. Hey, children. Hello. Excuse me. Hello. Excuse me. Uh, okay, all right, you know, are you listening to me at all? Did this story of the Garden of Angels ring true to you? Not this time. We created it. We created it. Also, don't cheat. If you're if you're inclined to cheat, think about think about what that means, you know? We're just having a good time here. These points mean nothing. It's better to lose points and have a good time in chat than to look it up and win points. I don't. Not this time. We created it. Let's look at the paces the spirits of the witness smeared. Could it be the time? But what then? Find out if this drugstore... Find out if this... Wait, fate visits a corner drugstore? Another generation. Fact right. or fiction. We created it. For those of us who grew up in another generation, the corner drugstore was a magical place. Is there anybody who's from another generation in the chat? Can you speak to this? I'm certainly I'm certainly too young to remember when a drugstore was a magical place. However, whoa, Kira, wait, what was that? Was that sources for the stories? Hang on. I'll look at that in a second. Um so so the only time I would say that a corner store is a magical place is if you've ever been to a 7-Eleven in Japan. If if anybody knows about like 7-Eleven, Lawson's, Family Mart in Japan, those are magical places. Like in Tokyo or something, that is a magical corner store. J Japanese convenience stores are magical places. They're so sick. It's like you can eat lunch there. You can like get everything you need. It's – oh, man. They're pretty magical in China too. I haven't. I've I've only been in I've only been in to like the Shanghai airport. Uh so I haven't been in any convenience stores in China. Mainland China at least. Jarvis, you're doing the meme? What meme am I doing? What meme? What kind of meme am I doing? I have to know what meme I'm doing. Anyway. I think it's well documented the 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 stark difference in like Japanese convenience stores are like it's 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 very interesting. You gave the man behind the counter an illegible note. Fiction. That everything is better in Japan meme. I didn't say everything is better in Japan. I just said I just said Japanese convenience stores are 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 ma a magical are magical places. And that's true. I stand by that. For those of us who grew up in another generation, the corner drugstore was a magical place. You gave the man behind the counter an illegible note from your doctor, and he would fill tiny bottles with pills and potions that had the power to make you feel better. And perhaps most magical of all, the man knew you by name. Everett Spencer was a throwback to that earlier time when the pharmacy profession was a personal one. But now the modern era is starting to close in on him like like a virus and he has no prescription to fight it off. This is like um 
back in the day when like Dr. Pepper was like a, a serum that you would get from your local drugstore. Like Everett Spencer was always a hero to his grandson. That's why he became a pharmacist too. In the old days, Everett was quick, sharp, on top of all the latest breakthroughs. But nowadays, he was slow and set in his ways. Just post the prescription. Oh, on the Boyer board. says this one's okay, but the next one's hilarious. Board and type out the label. The new junior partner, his grandson, Martin, was going to change all that. There we are, Granddad. The family business. How about that? I <laughs> Wait, why? Why was that so funny? There we are, Granddad. The family business. Slow pan. How about that? Dad, the family business. How about that? I couldn't be more proud. The first customer that day was a steady patron of the pharmacy since Martin was a little boy. Hello, Ruth, how are you doing this morning? Doing just fine, Everett. Do you remember my grandson, Martin? Oh, of course. <laughs> Martin is a pharmacist too. He's I do work. I do wish that like I do uh what romanticize the small town vibe. You know what I mean? Like I do romanticize the idea of like going to places and like everybody knows knows you and stuff. Um I used to live on top of uh in a in a nice way, in a nice way. I used to live on top of um a this Irish pub in San Francisco and I knew like the staff there and it was very nice. Um, and then like there, I lived down the street from like Phil's coffee, the first Phil's. And that was nice as well. Like people would be like, Hey Jarvis, how's it going? And I didn't have to do too much like small talk, but I'd just be like, Hey, and they'd be like, your order's ready. And I'd be like, this is nice. And then every now and again, you, you know, you'd make some small talk, but not always, not always. You know, I'm I'm like introverted naturally, so I don't always want to make small talk, but it is nice to have the option. When am I gonna do the fashion stream? I don't know yet, but it hasn't happened yet. Being with me. It's nice to see you, Mrs. Fulton. That being said, the small like there's other things that I don't like about small towns, so Thank you. Martin, could you snag Ms. Fulton's prescription off the shelf? Sure. It must be wonderful having your grandson back here again and working with you, too. It's a proud day. Uh, Granddad? <laughs> yes, that's it. Uh, there's no drug indicated. Yes, we know what it's for, don't we, Ruth? <laughs> now, can I get you anything else? Whoa! Grandpa! Grandpa, are you sliding Ruth some of the good stuff? Grandpa? House today. No. Grandpa's a drug dealer. Oh, no, no, this will keep me going. See you the couple okay. of weeks. Okay, bye bye. <laughs> Granddad, what were those pills? Oh, Ruth's been taking those for the better part of twenty years. Well, there was no drug name. I mean, what if she forgets and she starts mixing prescriptions? I mean, you should indicate what they are, unless they're sugar pills. That's right. Why are you giving her pills that have no medicinal purpose? Because she thinks... If you work in a pharmacy and you haven't heard of the placebo effect, I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you. Also, they're for sure like narcotics. They do. Okay, Granddad, it's time we step into the 21st century. The only people who are prescribed placebos anymore are... Sometimes people like Mrs. Fulton... <laughs> Anyway, she swears by They're ghost by them. pills. You heard her. They keep her going. Oh, Grandpa, you're still typing labels with that old typewriter? Everyone's computerized now. Everyone. Everyone's me, computerized now, no including me. We are all androids now. Everyone has been computerized. To learn something so complicated. It's easy, Grandpa. I <laughs> this was filmed in the 21st century. Yeah, for real. They're making it seem like it's 1676. And um, I will say that the driving school, the the driving school. It, okay, it was filmed almost in the 21st century, in the late 20th century. Um, the driving school that I, um, 
went to to like learn to drive they did uh apparently like the reason that they messed up so much of my like scheduling and things like that was because the owner does everything on paper because he's owned the business for like 70 years or something and um and everybody kept quitting because it's like the worst run business ever and i was like dude everybody's computerized now grandpa I could teach you it you gotta get with the times would triple our business doctors could email us directly we would finally be able to compete with the chain pharmacies i enjoy my relationships with people I 70 years is he a ghost no i think he literally started the business when he was like 20. i like talking to the doctors well now you can talk to the doctors about your golf game and not prescriptions you're not gonna that happened to my older brother well i did this in la but shout out to gainesville convince me that technology is more important than human relations Damn, this is prophetic. Technology more important than human relations? Never heard of it. Be right with you. It's me, Grandpa. Here it is, our link to the 21st century. It's the laptop from uh, Diane Lerner, actually. We found it amongst her, amongst her belongings and... Uh, they auctioned it off for whatever reason. I know, I know you're not happy about it, but this one is so easy, Grandpa. Everything we need is already loaded. We just plug it in. I got. Th is this literally the same laptop, actually? Got it all set up. Now, with this bundle of wires, you can go on an African safari. I'm too old for a safari. Well, not if you could do it in the comfort of your own chair. Okay, let's set this baby up. I've got to mail these letters. Mrs. Samuels will be in to pick up her medication. It's 10 milligrams of Epicet. The prescription is right here. I'll put it on the board. Dr. S.L. Hampton. Yeah. Yeah, I called his office yesterday. I gave them a new email address. I'll bet they emailed that prescription. <laughs> Dr. D's in. Okay. Dr. D's in. I'm sure he sent me a uh, an email. Let's just pull it up. I'll be right back. I'll take care of Mrs. Samuels. Martin could tell that his grand... <laughs> Dr. D's? Oh, I know Dr. D's. ...father was upset, but he felt that in time, he would thank him for all this. I'll be right back. Third ghost laptop in the last two days, yeah. I, if this is a ghost laptop... There. Martin would never forget this customer. Not after what happened that day. Yeah, calling Dr. Dover, Dr. Ben Dover. Hi, can I help you? Yes, I'm picking up a prescription. Harriet Samuels. Oh, yes, Mrs. Samuels. It'll be just a few minutes. Martin went to the board where Everett had posted Mrs. Samuels' prescription. But the prescription is gone. And it showed up on the computer screen. Hurry. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Dr. Hampton, 10 milligrams of Equisite. I was just... Wait, are Jarvis's headphones that badly tangled? Are you really that pressed about it? Yeah, I can fix it. I hope you're happy. I hope you're happy. It affects my life zero. Just about to fill it. Is there a problem? No, ma'am. No, um... I just... I just need to reconfirm the prescription on There's always someone who's like super pressed about like a tiny detail. Our new computer system. We're linked up with Dr. Hampton's office, so this should just take a second. This was the first test of Martin's system, the high tech approach. But for some reason, the prescription wasn't coming up. Now I use earbuds. I use wired headphones because of, um, because of latency. And I use, uh, earbuds over headphones because I don't want my hair to like get an indent of a thing. As I said, I'm, I'm in a hurry. Yes, ma'am, I'll, I'll be right with you. Hello, Mrs. Samuels. Oh, hello, Everett. Are Jarvis's earbuds really that untangled? Yeah, no, if you're that pressed about it, I can fix it for you. Perhaps you can help. 
I'm in a hurry, and I think there might be a problem with my prescription. I hope that I hope I hope that makes you happy. I hope that's better now. I'll take care of it right away. I'm sorry for the delay. Thank you, Everett. Do you have the prescription? It's not on the board. I couldn't find it. Did you call the doctor? Well, I was trying to get it. <laughs> okay, this is stupid. Um. <laughs> Um, the computer <laughs> chat will really be like Jarvis breathing pattern. Yeah, I don't think one one thing that I'm expecting people to eventually comment on is the fact that I always breathe through my mouth. I'm a mouth breather because I have like a deviated septum and can't breathe through both my nostrils at the same time. Like one of my nostrils is just perpetually closed, and it swaps like depending on which one, and so I breathe through my mouth. Um, and I'm it's you know, I. The issue is that I need to get it fixed, but uh, getting it fixed is technically plastic surgery because it's not like a life changing. It's not a life changing like operation or life changing condition, so uh, I have to like pay out of pocket for it. First, I mean, I know that you said it was ten milligrams of Acrocet, but Carolyn, it's Everett Spencer. Well, another way the American healthcare system is the best. I've misplaced the prescription for Harriet Samuels. Uh, can I have a minute with SL? SL, I'm sorry to bother you. I, I've managed to misplace the prescription on Harriet Samuels. I know it's for Equiset, 10 milligrams, but I... LASIK is considered cosmetic surgery? Damn, I had a different surgery that was also considered plastic surgery, even though it was like treating a health condition. Just because it's not like, because the insurance companies uh, are the ones who decide if it's covered or not. And they like, basically are like, is it life threatening? One milligram. Oh, uh, oh thank goodness I called you. Sure, sure. Goodbye. Grandpa. Jarvis talking about plastic surgery. LA changed him. True, true. 10 milligrams would have killed her. Sorry, I wasn't paying attention to the story because of the whole headphone thing. I got to back up. I'm sorry, everybody watching on YouTube, feverishly typing your thing, your comments about how I how I rewind too much. I'm sorry. Thank you. Uh, oh, what's the better? Wait, what happened? Okay, Miss Samuel shows up. My prescription. I'll take care of it right away. There's a problem. He's not on the board. On the board. it was 10 milligrams of Acrocet, but... Carolyn, it's Everett Spencer. I've misplaced the prescription for Harriet Samuels. Uh, can I have a minute with SL? SL, I'm sorry to bother you. She's like, DN, I'm sorry to bother you. I, I've managed to misplace the prescription on Harriet Samuels. I know it's for Equiset, 10 milligrams, but I... One milligram? Oh, uh, Thank goodness I called you. <laughs> sure, sure. Goodbye. Oh my God, Grandpa. I mean, ten milligrams would have killed her. I'm sure it said ten milligrams. We'll be right with you, Mrs. Samuels. We're just discussing how I almost murdered you with the wrong prescription. We'll be right with you. You can trust us. <laughs> would you fill it for me, please? At that point, Everett walked over to check the board again. Martin? Jarvis Rewind, did it say 10? 10? 10? Uh, it did say 10 before, right? Like, I thought you said it, it says wasn't 10 here. Now. Wait, they knew 10 milligrams would kill her, but we're still going to give her 10 until I checked again. Right, yeah, they knew. If they knew 10 would kill her. Literally, what is that story about? Does anyone understand that story? Because it's over now and I don't understand anything. <laughs> what was that story about? 
Jonathan Franks was just like, pharmacies in the old days used to be pretty cool, and you would meet lots of fun people in your neighborhood. Anyway, here's a non sequitur for 10 minutes. Who was watching over Spencewick Pharmacy that day? Was that fated prescription simply misplaced? If so, how did it end up back on the board? Did Everett's grandson find it and put it back himself, too embarrassed to tell his grandfather what really happened? But then, how did it disappear in the first place? Maybe there was some angelic spirit watching over the pharmacy. Does this strange story of a prescription go down easy? Or do you find it hard to swallow? Literally, is the story that, like... What is the story? Is like... Could you believe that they misplaced the prescription? We made it up. That would never happen. That's actually supernatural that that they could they could actually typo the the prescription. Uh, yes, fact or fiction? Always, we're always so tricky. Like <laughs> they they lost a paper and it's scary. Uh, Sarah, do you want to put the chat in slow mode? I I'm following it okay. Is it is there like a spamming issue or something? Um. Find out if this story is true or false at the end of our show. Next, a scary story of summer camp on Beyond Belief, fact or fiction. All right, scary story about summer camp. I'm excited about this one because uh, Boyo said it was good. Oh, no, it's okay, Sarah. I think um, I also just think my eyes have gotten used to it. Uh, Kira's here, but then I'm, I'm also, I feel like I'm, I'm chilling right now, but if it, if it speeds up, then we may slow it down. Um, so, okay, wait, 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 since the script was paper and not digital, they misplaced it, making them double check the script where they found out it was wrong, saving your life. Right. And then I'm like, that mistake could have, that could have been a data entry mistake as well. Right. Like. At some point, that I feel like that computers wouldn't have fixed necessarily fixed the problem. You know, it might. I feel like you could a computer could very easily a human is still at fault. Also, why would a doctor? Why would a doctor prescribe a deadly dose of? Uh, or he didn't because it because it was ten milligrams, or because it's supposed to be one, but. I think it was an anti-computer thing. I can't figure out if it's pro or anti-computers. Yeah, computers are bad, I guess. Doctors are bad. Old drugstores are bad. One of those. Pieces of paper, cork boards are bad. The grandpa wanted to kill her. Do we know that? Yeah, the paper still said 10 milligrams, so I don't understand what the point was. The The handwritten paper had nothing to do with the computer. 80 year old pharmacists are bad yeah maybe that what's up sarah placebos are dangerous for most of us summer camp evokes sweet oh we got to figure out if that was real or not all right so we're doing a prediction five seconds left um get with the times grandpa fact 96 percent. well how is he going to talk about this story though? that's what i want to know what about the story of the vanishing prescription? Did you think this one was based on reality? I've it's a story where they lose a piece of paper. <laughs> I mean, I think that, like, I don't understand what's so hard to believe about this. Managed to misplace the prescription on Harriet Samuels. I know it's for Equiset, 10 milligrams, but I... One milligram? Oh, uh... well, you... Do you believe that there could be an administrative error at the doctor's office? That's impossible. We made it up. <laughs> well, thank goodness I called you. Sure, sure. Goodbye. Oh well, thank goodness I called you. Grandpa, I mean, 10 milligrams would have killed her. This tale that's why when you pick up a prescription, there's like all the check. Like when I go pick up a prescription at like my local pharmacy, I like tell them my name. They pull it up in the thing. And then a doc, the doctor comes over and goes, so this is for like 10 milligrams of like 
Equus or whatever the fuck, the horse drug, <laughs> um, the drug that turns you into a horse. And, uh, and I'm like, oh, yeah, no, that's what I discussed with my, uh, like, with my doctor. Yes. And they're like, great, cool. We're all good. Here you go. Do you need any information about how to take it? Are you familiar with this drug? And then I go, yes, I'm familiar with horse drug equ equestrian. And then they're like, okay, good. It'll be like a thousand dollars because your insurance isn't covering it. I'll be like, frick. Okay. I guess I'll, I guess I want, I need the drug. Um, of a mysterious. please make the voting longer. I'm trying to figure out how to vote and I'm running out of time every time. Okay. Next prediction I'll do for longer. Force protect. Aren't pharmacists also responsible in the case of a dosage error? I actually don't know, but. Oh no. Yeah. Apparently like a lot of places don't, don't tell you. I mean, shout out to, I mean, I, I, I go to like a CVS. It's not a fancy pharmacy or anything. Um, a pharmacy is based on an act. Okay, wait. This tale of a mysterious force protecting a pharmacy is based on an actual. A mysterious force protecting a pharmacy. That day. Was that fated for son? How did it over the. Or do you find it hard to swallow? A scary story of. Some of a summer camp of. Beyond belief, fact, or fiction. For most of us, summer camp evokes sweet thoughts of fresh air, fun in the sun, and mischief after dark. But for some children. Ooh, what kind of mischief are you getting into, Mr. Frakes? I never got into mischief after dark. I was kind of a square. Summer camp recalls more bitter feelings. Izzy Harp, thank you for the prime. Memories of isolation, homesickness, and the taunts of their peers. All Anthony Shaw wanted to do was have a happy, carefree summer away. Everyone knew he was different. They were about to find out he was special. Okay. This is actually one that I cut for, for my, from my video. Oh, snap. Okay. I never really wanted to go away to camp. All I really did there was read. And I could have done that staying at home. I actually liked the rainy days the best because they gave us free time. And I could lose myself in a book. I really didn't give anybody any trouble. I mean, that's, you know, nothing wrong with that. Quest pending. Thank you for the prime. Though I, I, I need to find more opportunities to just, like meet people because i feel like i stay in my apartment now especially post covid and i'm like i need to i don't even like socializing that much but i feel like i'm like i feel like i need to meet people i just wanted to be left alone i couldn't figure out why the other kids wouldn't allow that to happen especially marty and darren Never do this. Never, never put your hand on someone's mouth from behind. Okay, it's me. Keep your hands off me. I need your help. All that was to ask for his help? Will you help me? What? What is this oblivion dialogue? <laughs> wait, can we play the... Uh, wait, hang on. Is this the one? Don't be a jerk. I need your help. Will you help me? Wait, wait, wait. Off me. Oh. I need your help. Will you help me? With what? <laughs> For over an hour. I oh. know, I know. I'm getting hungry too. At least the rain quit a little bit. <laughs> Did you hear that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll check the back tent. You check the storage tent. Rochelle.
Oh, that's so satisfying. Just a big old Velcro. I bet there's like 10 hours of pulling Velcro. This is filmed like a 10th grade video project and I love it. True. Oh no. Oh God, I hope there's not blood. Oh my God, what the hell? Just like, a, it's a weird, it's like a, what is that? It's like a makeup. Oh, okay, and then, and then the kid is in a Jason mask. Oh God, I didn't help it. I didn't help it, I'm sorry. It's like a really bad makeup job. So I'm like, I pr it's probably not even Twitch TOS, but I, I tried and then I failed. That wasn't funny. What yeah. the hell's going on? Nothing. Just having a little fun. Well, who was screaming? It sounded like someone was getting murdered. Yeah! yeah. Anthony, go to your tent. You two clowns, come with me. Sit down. Is there something seriously wrong with you guys? It was a joke. We got hurt. And All right, hang on. Sorry. Is there something seriously wrong with you guys? It was a joke. We got hurt. Anthony did. Now I want you guys to lay off him. But this was totally rad. You should have seen him. Man, he's the most his Knock it off. Now he's a nice kid. Who's having a hard time? <laughs> try, try to have a little bit of compassion, okay? I mean, how would you feel if someone did something like that to you? No one does. I'm such a wimp. And stop calling him names. You understand me? The way that, the way that the uh, camp counselor interrupts them feels like an NPC. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Marty. Okay. Jeez. Another, f that's such a specific line. It's another fiber filled snack day at summer camp. <laughs> Why did he say fiber filled? Man, he's putting this on. Come on, Anthony, wake up. <laughs> Anthony. Hey, they say the rain should be letting up. Let's get dressed and moving. Richard, look at Anthony. I think there's something definitely wrong. Hey, Anthony, we're going canoeing today. Your favorite. Get up. Where's Marty and Darren? They do this to him. I, I don't know. The kid is like having a nightmare slash seizure. Could they maybe don't focus? Maybe focus on what's directly in front of you. Oh, I haven't seen him all morning. I didn't see him either. His pulse is racing. Huh? Anthony, you okay? I had a nightmare. It was weird. You know how sometimes. Do you think those? So I'm trying to think of where they're <laughs> where they're going. Uh, do you think that those kids are not real, or something, or, or those kids are? I, I don't want to say the kids are dead, but I, I'm wondering. In your dreams, you do something and you don't know why. I dreamt that I got out of bed and went running and running through the woods. All I knew was somebody was in trouble and I was the only one who could help them. Oh. Us. Oh, okay. So this is just okay. Got it. It's a husky. <laughs> That's a wolf. That's a hungry, hungry wolf. Imagine, imagine seeing a um. Imagine seeing, like a wolf in the wild, and then going, "That's a hungry, hungry wolf." <laughs> um. Do, 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 It's, get it? It's the song Hungry Like the Wolf. I'm on the hunt, I'm after you. Help, help, no! Nice. <laughs> what the dog doing? Come on, kids, make yourself big. Rawr! Shh. 
You know what's wild about style trends? For most of my life, a gray sweatsuit it was, is, like, not stylish, right? But I feel like today, Kanye West would, like, perform a show dressed like this. You know what I mean? And probably has. And and I and I would wear this. I would wear this today. I think a gray sweatsuit is officially drippy these days. I think it is. I swear if you read a book about how to survive a wolf attack, that's a good uh Oh, we've got a pun. What would you see to do if you saw a wolf? Say, hungry wolf? Make yourself big. Play dead. Nobody's doing that. Make a new voicemail. Shout out to Sadboy's podcast. Hit <laughs> the quan. All right. Yes, be quiet. Here you go. You want another? Why are you... Don't get him to come towards you. Down the hill, slowly. Sarah, we appreciate your, Don't your points. Don't chase you. Dude, these are fiber-filled snacks. Yeah, not the fiber-filled snacks. Never even growled at me or anything. Just kept staring at me. Dude, he has a wolf familiar now. You know what that means. He left the tent in his dreams. Yeah, it was an astral projection. That's the cookies. That's the ones he fed the wolf. So what kind of a dream was that anyway? <laughs> How could Anthony have been asleep? Yeah, he, he should have peed himself. Sleep in his bunk and outside in the woods at the same time. And if he was in his bunk the whole time, that who saved Marty and Darren from the wolf? Did Marty and Darren, in their terror, only imagine that Anthony was there? <coughs> but what about the detail of the chocolate chip cookies? Could they have imagined that, too? Don't this do this to us. You're going to make us all want chocolate chip cookies, Jonathan Frakes. Don't do this. And being in two places at once, or is it just enough? That's a Chips Ahoy cookie. I recognize a Chips Ahoy cookie anywhere. They really, they, with all the budget of this show, they gave Jonathan Frakes a freaking chips ahoy. Other tale one would tell around the fire at summer camp. Next, you'll find out which of our stories are fact and which are fiction when Beyond Belief returns. Judge if I can. All right, let's do the. Uh, um, did wait? What was the kid's name? Jonathan? No, that's no, that's Jonathan Frakes. Never mind. Do you remember the kid's name? Anthony? Did Anthony Astral project fact fiction? Oh, I didn't do it longer. I'm sorry, everybody. I didn't do it. I didn't do it longer. I meant to do it longer. We'll do it next time. Why are there Star Trek actors in every one of these episodes? Because uh, uh, he's the host. Okay, we got... <clears throat> also, the winner of the poll, Say Hungry Wolf with 41%. And we've got a 73-27 factor fiction split here. Good spread. Get out. Playing sound. Left her... I'm, for the next one, nah, nah, nah. I, I kind of like how we do it. I kind of like getting the closure on each episode. I don't like waiting till the very end. One was based on reality. I thought would have incident. It's real. All right, here we go. 
A story that took place at summer camp of a boy that seemed to be in two. Why do you say it like that? <clears throat> Our story that took place at summer camp. Places. A story that took place at summer camp of a boy that seemed to be in two places at once. Fact or fiction? Go down the hill slowly behind me. Don't run or he'll chase you. <clears throat> Never even growled at me or anything. Don't do it, Sarah. Don't do it. I just kept staring at me. Not every guy with a beard is Eddie Burbank. Was this a figment of a writer's imagination? No. This one was inspired by truth. Wow. Wow. You can so Patronuses and astral projection are real. That's a fact. That's a fact. And he doesn't give any explanation. All right. <clears throat> That's an episode of Fact or Fiction under our belts. Thank you for joining us youtube and we're gonna keep on going here on twitch.tv slash jarvis johnson um